According to Einstein's theory of relativity, it is physically impossible for any object in the universe to travel faster than the speed of light. That's right. It means all those fancies about traveling the depths of space and discovering new worlds may be nothing more than pipe dreams. And no matter how advanced our technology becomes in the future, it seems that we'll be forever confined to our own little solar system. Although this may come as a disappointment to those of us who have dreamed about visiting distant planets, it's a fundamental truth about how the universe functions. It's a daunting thought, and one that may be difficult to accept. But a recent discovery by physicists has the potential to completely shake up the foundations of physics as we know it. They now believe that defying Einstein's law may not be as impossible as we once thought. So, let's dive into scientists' greatest fantasies and investigate how a tiny particle, smaller than an atom, could unlock mysteries of distant space. Will humans one day become interstellar beings? And is it really possible to travel faster than light? Join us for this and more. The speed of light is just one of the most well-known constants in the universe and is considered to be the fastest speed at which anything can ever travel. It's a fundamental aspect of the way the universe works and has shaped our understanding of physics and the cosmos. However, it may come as a surprise to some that the speed of light can actually change depending on the material it's traveling through. When light passes through different substances, its speed can vary by as much as 50%. So, what causes the speed of light to change? It happens due to a phenomenon that is known as refraction. In physics, refraction is the redirection of a wave as it passes from one medium to another. Different materials have different indices of refraction a measure of how much the speed of light will be slowed down when it passes through the material. Materials with a higher index of refraction, like glass or water, will slow down light more than materials with a lower index, like air or vacuum. For example, the speed of light in water is 225 million meters per second, which is about 25% slower than in a vacuum. And in glass, it's 200 million meters per second, which is about 33% slower than in a vacuum. Refraction in glass is just light traveling in first gear. But why does the speed of light change in different mediums at all? It's because light is actually a type of electromagnetic wave. As it travels through a material, it can interact with the electrons in that material. This interaction causes the light to slow down as some of its energy is transferred to the material. This is why if you've ever placed a pencil in a glass of water, you may have noticed that it appears to be bent. The light waves are slowed down as they pass through the water and cause the pencil to appear to be at a different angle than it actually is. But to make the prospect of traveling to interstellar planets a reality, we will need to find a way to outsmart the speed of light in a vacuum, where it is still the ultimate speed champion. The idea of traveling faster than light, often referred to as superluminal travel, has captivated the imaginations of scientists and the general public alike for decades. In actuality, achieving superluminal speeds presents a number of significant challenges and problems. One of the biggest issues with traveling faster than light is that it violates the principle of causality, which states that the cause must come before the effect. In other words, if you travel faster than light, you could potentially arrive at your destination before you even leave, which would create a paradox. This can be a confusing and difficult concept to wrap your head around. But try to imagine what it would be like if you were traveling at the speed of light.
time would appear to stand still and you would be immune to the effects of aging. However, if you were able to travel even faster, all sorts of strange and confusing situations could arise, such as you might arrive at a destination only to find that it no longer exists because you changed the past by arriving before you left. Another issue with the prospect of superluma travel is the vast amount of energy it would require to achieve such speeds. Einstein says that it takes a tremendous amount of energy to accelerate an object to the speed of light, and humans cannot ever generate or harness enough energy to achieve this. The challenges of superluma travel don't end there. There are also a number of physical consequences that pose significant risks to any travelers. For example, the extreme forces created by traveling at such high speeds could lead to severe injuries or even death. But despite the many challenges and risks, some scientists believe that faster than light travel may one day be a dream come true. One way we might be able to overcome the problem of causality is by finding ways to manipulate space-time itself. Scientists believe it may be possible to create wormholes or shortcuts through space-time that would allow us to bypass the limitations of causality and travel instantly to different locations. One more potential solution to the challenges of superluma travel could come from the use of tiny particles known as neutrinos. These mystery particles are some of the smallest and most elusive things in the universe, and they're full of surprises. Neutrinos are incredibly tiny and also incredibly fast, about a billion times lighter than an electron, and travel at speeds close to the speed of light. But what makes neutrinos truly fascinating is their ability to pass through almost anything. They can pass through walls, Earth, and even entire galaxies without being stopped or slowed down. In fact, billions of neutrinos pass through your body every second, and you don't even feel it. But where do neutrinos come from? One way neutrinos can be produced is through the process of radioactive decay, in which an unstable atomic nucleus transforms into a more stable form by releasing particles. Neutrinos are also produced in the cores of stars, including our very own Sun. In fact, the Sun is one of the primary sources of neutrinos on Earth. Every second, billions of neutrinos are produced by the Sun and pass through our planet. Despite their abundance in the universe, neutrinos can be challenging to detect due to their lack of interaction with matter. And it wasn't until the 1950s that scientists were able to detect neutrinos for the first time. Today, scientists use special detectors, such as giant tanks filled with a special type of fluid to detect neutrinos. Researchers think neutrinos may hold the key to understanding some of the universe's most puzzling occurrences such as the formation of black holes. They also have caused scientists to question one of the most fundamental laws of physics, the cosmic speed limit. In 2011, scientists at the Opera Experiment in Italy made headlines when they claimed to have measured neutrinos traveling faster than the speed of light. If true, this would have been a groundbreaking discovery as it would have challenged our current understanding of the universe and the laws that govern it. However, further investigation revealed that the experiment was full of errors, and the idea that neutrinos could travel faster than light was ultimately debunked. While it may seem like a far-fetched idea to travel faster than light, it is true that there is still some solid evidence to suggest that it could be possible. The key to using neutrinos to travel faster than light lies in their ability to oscillate between different flavors. Neutrinos come in three different types, electron, muon, and tau. Normally, neutrinos constantly switch between these flavors as they travel through space. But scientists have discovered that they can also be made to oscillate more rapidly 
by passing them through a medium with a high refractive index. This phenomenon, known as the neutrino oscillation effect, has been observed in a number of experiments, and scientists believe that it could be used to create a neutrino beam that could be used to propel objects through space at speeds that exceed the speed of light. While much more research is needed to confirm whether this idea is truly feasible, the possibility that neutrinos could be used to travel faster than light is an exciting one. Achieving superluminal travel isn't that easy. It requires breaking and pushing boundaries, finding new ways to overcome challenges, and taking risks. At first, we might need to embrace the unknown, but it would, without a shadow of a doubt, also be an incredibly rewarding and exciting journey. What do you think? Can we ever travel faster than light? How will it affect us and our understanding of the universe? If you want to learn more, consider subscribing to Now Next and also check out some of our other space-related content on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.